Today brings with it some details about the AMD AM4 X370 motherboard as of course at the moment it is only available for OEMs and won't be available through traditional means around CES 2017 but if you're considering an upgrade for your PC anytime in the near future chances are good that you're considering AMD's Zen. So there will be four different chipset variants for AM4 and the highest board variant will be the or feature rather the X37 platform x370 rather which will likely serve as your platform of choice for anyone wishing to jump onto summit rich however let's start out with the things that all of the m4 motherboards have in common one thing we'll of course see is the switch to ddr4 and up to speeds of 2400 megahertz is being touted apus will certainly make good use of this due to the high performance gpus requiring extra bandwidth but it also is pretty nice for the system performance as a whole Faster CPUs, of course, need more data to, theory, uh, to feed them, and in theory, we could also see this being applied to large data swaps over PCIe 2. We also have USB 3.1 Gen 2 being included, along with NVMe and SATA Express. So let's move on now to the details surrounding the X370. Now AMD have confirmed that this particular one will indeed support both Crossfire and SLI configuration thanks to two PCIe 3.0 x16 slots, assuming you're putting a Zen in there. Remember the Bristol Ridge APUs are relegated to just x8 support. And if people such as say MSI or Asus or whoever want to, they are free to expand the number of PCIe lanes by the use of a PLX uh, chip. Because of the extra cost of adding PLX onto the AM4 X370 boards, it is possible that they'll only do this for the high-end premium boards, but there will probably be exactly that kind of market for the higher-end Summit Ridge boards. Now another thing that the X370 will have over its mainstream brother, the AM4 B350, will be fine-grained overclocking controls. From what we know, there's going to be better GUIs, for easier control of BIOS, and even better tools to allow for better overclocking and fine grain controls. For example, at the moment, currently anyone wishing to play around with the Bristol Ridge lineup of CPUs are benefiting enorm enormously with the unlocked mo multiplier of the AM4 platform, and this should, in theory, apply to the Zem Summit Ridge Zen as well. A few things we can expect alongside everything else we've discussed here are the usual sort of array of advancements and adjustments such as memory timings, frequencies, voltages and most likely various bus speeds across the motherboard along with voltage controls for different components. But sadly we don't yet know what the overclocking plus controls that the X370 offers are exactly in detail just yet. So with that out of the way let's move swiftly on to the B350. Now with this you're still looking at a motherboard with a lot of overclocking potential but it isn't for those who perhaps are hoping to put in multiple graphics cards and isn't for the hardcore overclockers. It's more likely going to be the good option for people with perhaps a lower budget to upgrade looking to make the jump over to Summit Ridge as well. Now of course what happens with the different manufacturers like MSI and so on will definitely impact you know, what happens with the overclockability but with any luck this board should serve the needs of your average overclocker. Now the lower end boards are the A320 and these have been described as being aimed at users who just want the PC to just work. They want to plug everything in and they want it to just go. They're not particularly tweaked about running the highest overclocks at lowest possible voltage or anything like that. You know, if you want to think about it in sort of a comparative term, they are probably best compared as a replacement to both the A68H and the 760G motherboards. Now, this isn't to say there's not going to be any tweaking available to you, but that's probably going to be very vendor dependent and also fairly limited in comparison to the other offerings. However, last on our list today is the small form factor A300 boards, and from the available information that we have, is going to be a pretty cheap price and act as a pretty nice platform for HTPC builds. Again, as you would expect, there's going to be extremely limited overclocking controls and no Crossfire SLI support. 
uh, which does make sense, you can't run two high-end GPUs in a small form factor, and again, overclocking wouldn't really work too well here either. But to be honest, out of these four, the most interesting to most of you are probably the X370 and the B350, as they both present enough features to the table to appeal to both gamers and, of course, the more enthusiast sort of market of people. But of course, the question is all lying on the door of Zen. How well does it overclock? Sadly, I have misplaced my crystal ball, so I don't yet know, but uh, all we know at the moment is that the engineering sample Zen is happily trucking along at 3 GHz, but what the upper limit is for the silicone when AMD ship it and what's left in the tank remains to be seen, yada yada yada. But it's looking damn promising, but of course we should wait till the final release, final specs, and of course testing in the hands of reviewers before making that potential leap over to Summit Ridge. I suggest you take a look at the link in the description below this video. You'll find some lovely images and stuff for there for, the, there for your perusal. Words are hard apparently. And again, thank you very much for watching. Do remember to like and subscribe if you haven't done so already. And I'll see you next time.